and these spirits are coming up against you. So I want to say thank you for this book um, because if it wasn't for your info, if it wasn't for your guidance, went through these things and know what it's all about, I wouldn't have stood the, the, the greatest trial of my ministry wow. because yes. that spirit of seduction, that spirit of prophesy falseness, prophesy, yes, that's what they, they, they see. And it's what God say to them. And, um, uh, this book really, I really want to tell the body of Christ to the remnants, get yourself this book. This is a book that will teach you about these spirits that were, we are uh, specifically the Jezebelic spirit, how she, uh, I always call her this, this, um, 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 conniving if I can say that little spirit because she's always twisting and she's always seeing where can she get hold of of certain things so if you can just maybe uh, speak to the body of of the, of the remnants and tell them a little bit more about this but because this is arising in our area a lot yes wow you know I've written uh, three books on the spirit of Jezebel the first one was called the spiritual warrior's guide to defeating Jezebel. And it's really theological looking at the spirit because it is a spirit and it's not a female. It's not a male. Spirits are, are neither male nor female there, but, but, but we call it a her because it manifested in women, but a Jezebel spirit can manifest also in men, not just women. And people have really, so the second book I wrote on Jezebel was called um, uh, Jezebel's puppets. And the third book included Jezebel, Witchcraft, and Religion, and it's called uh, Satan's Deadly Trio. And then I have one chapter on Jezebel in that book, The Spiritual Warrior's Battle Plan. And we just launched the new webinar, Will the Real Jezebel Please Stand Up, where I'm teaching like eight hours on Jezebel at schoolofthespirit.tv. But let me give you some basics because here's the problem. So many people have been taught wrong or, let me say wrong, incomplete what Jezebel is. Uh, many think many people, for, for example, think that Jezebel can only flow through women. That's not true. Many th people think that Jezebel can be cast out. That Jezebel is just a demon that you can cast out. That's not true. Jezebel is a principality. This is a power. This is the on the highest level of Paul's uh, hierarchy of demons in Ephesians six. He said, "There's prince that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers." rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. And so Jezebel is at the top of the food chain and Jezebel also works with other spirits, such as the Python spirit, such as the Leviathan spirit. And so we see that that demon powers tag team against us. Usually it's not just one spirit, but the Jezebel spirit Another misconception about the Jezebel spirit is that this is a spirit of control. That is an incomplete revelation. It's not completely wrong in the sense that, listen, Jezebel does use control, but Jezebel is using control and manipulation as a means to an end. Jezebel uses control. Jezebel is not a spirit of control. Because if Jezebel was a spirit of control, we would just call it a spirit of control. There is a spirit of control and there is a spirit of manipulation, but Jezebel is not that. Jezebel uses control and uses manipulation and uses flattery and uses, you know, false prophecy uh, to seduce you. Jezebel at its essence is a spirit of seduction and it moves in, like I said, flattery. It, it wants to find you. It's a, Jezebel is an information seeking spirit. It wants to find out your deep secrets, your needs, where you've been hurt, where you've been wounded. Because Jezebel has the most uh, success in influencing people who are hurt and who are wounded. People who have made inner vows. People who have said, I'm never going to let them hurt me again. I'm never going to get married again. I'm never going to go to church again. And we make these inner vows and this attracts spirits like Jezebel to come and fortify and strengthen us and, 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 and help us and influence our thoughts. And so you can't cast Jezebel out because Jezebel is a principality. You can only deal with the person by helping them get healed of their hurts and their wounds. And so a lot of these prophets who are Jezebel's prophets 
they might not have started out that way. One of the things I teach is, and I taught this in my book, A Prophet's Heart, is that we, we have to understand that most of the time, the people who are false prophets did not start out as false prophets. So number one, either they were never prophets at all, and that's a real problem because we have all these people prophesying, you're a prophet, you're a prophet, you're a prophet, and they're, not, they're prophesying wrongly. They're not a prophet. And if you're not a prophet, someone prophesies you are a prophet, then you've got this probably an excitement because it seems like everybody wants to be a prophet. You shouldn't really want to be a prophet. It's not an easy job. But they get excited or they feel pressure to prophesy. And so you've got these people running around who have been prophesied to they're a prophet, but they're not a prophet. And what happens is now they feel pressure to take on a mantle that is not their mantle. And what happens is then the warfare comes against them and the warfare almost crushes them because they can't handle the warfare of a prophet because they're not a prophet. And so you see this now, they feel all this pressure to prophesy and they're prophesying falsely. What do I, what do I mean falsely? Well, something's either true or it's false. It can't be both. It's either true or it's false. It can't be both. And, you know, even a true prophet can release a false prophecy. Does it make them a false prophet? I'm going to say that again. Even a true prophet can release a false prophecy. It doesn't make them a false prophet. But prophecy is either right or it's wrong. It's black and white. It's true or false. So these ones who are called, they're not really called, but they're taking on this mantle of a prophet and they're prophesying wrongly or falsely. And you're believing it because you saw some big prophet prophesied to them that they're a prophet. Now you're trusting the wrong voice. But the other thing that happens is this. Now we're going to get back to Jezebel. Listen. We're going to get back to Jezebel. Listen, what also happens is this. A lot of the prophets who are genuinely false, they, they became false because of some outward temptation, such as temptation for money, temptation for platform, for fame, a temptation um, to make a great name for themselves, right? Or they got hurt so many times and it never got healed. And all of a sudden, they're listening to Jezebel's voice instead of the voice of God. You remember when Elijah, uh, he, he was uh, threatened by Jezebel. Uh, thank God he didn't succumb to that voice. He ran away, but he didn't stay in a cave. He came out of a cave. But sometimes when prophets get hurt, and let's face it, Jesus said prophets are going to be persecuted. Jesus said that the religious Pharisees killed the prophets, right? And so prophets are always going to have persecution. And if you don't learn as a prophet to have a thick skin and you don't learn as a prophet to get uh, healed of the rejection that you face, the hurts and wounds, the betrayals, if you don't stay before the Lord and receive constant cleansing, then you become an open target for Jezebel because Jezebel's spirit can see that you're hurt. Anybody can see that you're hurt. And that's why you see some of these bitter prophets, they're doom and gloom. They don't have anything good to say. They'll say revival's never coming to South Africa. God's going to judge South Africa. You know, they've never got anything good to say, yet God has got a redemption. But why, why are they saying these things? Because Jezebel is inspiring them because Jezebel hates revival. And so Jezebel doesn't want to see revival. Jezebel wants to see doom and gloom. And so those are some of the characteristics and, and, and how Jezebel has infiltrated the prophetic. And it's really sad. It needs to get turned around because... Um, it's, it's, there's this false prophets are not going to heaven. Okay. False prophets are those. Let me just define a false prophet. A false prophet is somebody who intentionally sets out to deceive you or who has given themselves over to spirits and won't repent. Right. So now they're being controlled and being influenced by outside spirits. So false prophets are, they, they know they're deceiving you. They know, they know, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. And if they don't know, it's because their conscience has been seared like with a hot iron and they've got a reprobate mind because the Holy Spirit warned them over and over and they wouldn't heed the Holy Spirit's warnings. But false prophets are not going to heaven. They're going to hell. That's why we need to pray that some of these will find a way and a voice or some kind of confrontation. They can repent. So there's that. Based on a startling encounter about a prophetic showdown coming to the body of Christ, where true and false prophets will be exposed, discerning prophetic witchcraft will equip you to be on the right side of the truth. This book exposes the supernatural divination deceiving spiritually hungry believers. Discern the signs of true and false prophets and prophecy. Avoid prophetic con artists. Escape charismatic witchcraft. 
recognize witches and psychics posing as prophets, and much more. Open your eyes to the divination trying to ambush your life with discerning prophetic witchcraft. Pick up your copy wherever books are sold.